Dan from danwagner.co with a quick tutorial on how to take date filter data from one worksheet inside a workbook and move it to a new worksheet inside the same workbook. So a little backstory here. This one is actually a question related to a tutorial I did earlier and you can grab that link out of the code comments which are included in the article which is down in the description of this video. Um, but this is a little bit of a smaller case than the original article was written about. In this case we only have a single worksheet with dates in one place rather than many worksheets and we actually want the data to go to a new worksheet in the same workbook. So before we dive into the code, let's just make sure everything works as we expect. So first things first, I'm going to run what I would call a happy path. I'm going to pick two dates that exist within the range and make sure that they come out as expected on a new worksheet. So I'll pick the 5th of March to say the 10th of March. Awesome. We get a little message box confirming that the data was transferred our dates match from the 5th of March to the 10th of March and we can see that we're on a new worksheet. So that's good stuff. Now let's check what happens when we pass in dates that don't actually make sense for the data that's available. Let's say if we try to get April 1st of 2016 to say April 15th of 2016. I'm going to start this one again. And when we run the script there, we get a nice warning that says, oops, those dates filter out all the data. And you can see here on sheet one, the original data source, all we have left is the header column. So when I click OK, the script undoes those filters and we return to a nice jumping off point again. So now uh, let's, uh, let's get into the code a little bit here. Um, the prompt user for input dates is actually a routine that we wrote in the original article and I use that one word for word for word line for line and nothing makes me happier than reusing a uh, a routine like this it's very very portable and very handy the create subset worksheet however is the the interesting place where we're doing our work here I'm going to skip the setup and exploration steps of the four-step VBA process because those are detailed really nicely in the article and you can grab that information out of the article again from the link in the YouTube video description box below. I'm going to spend my time focused on the execution step which is where things really get interesting here. So first things first we start off with a context manager in place on range full. So range full is essentially column A to column J, row 1 to row 16. We call the auto filter method on range full. And for the field parameter, we pass in the date column. We know it's column 8, which is column H as in hotel here. The first filter criteria we want to apply is greater than or equal to the start date. And the second filter criteria we want to apply is less than or equal to the end date. So by setting up these bookends, we are going to end up with exactly the rows that we're interested in that match our user's input to the prompt user for input dates subroutine. All right. So moving right along here, we have what's called a guard clause up first in this if statement. And what we're checking for here is a situation where the filters are a little bit too pervasive and we wind up with only the header row left. So we're checking to see if this long statement evaluates to one. Because if it does evaluate to one, that means that all we have left are our headers. And that's not really an interesting case. So in that situation, we throw out a message box, we clean up our filters, and we exit the routine. But assuming that the count is anything greater than one, we go ahead, assign all the visible cells to a new range. We create a new worksheet using the worksheets.add method right here. 
we set a target range, which is simply cell A1 on the newly created worksheet. And then we copy the result range, which again is just the visible cells from the filtered range to the target range, which is cell A1 on the newly formed worksheet. And then finally, of course, we clean up all of our filters in a safe way because leaving filters executed on a worksheet is a recipe for disaster. You're going to get runtime errors sooner or later. And then finally, we throw a message box to our user to let him or her know that the data has been transferred. And so if you have any questions or concerns about how this works, please don't hesitate to ask. Drop me a comment here or even shoot me an email. That information is all handy in the linked article. So thanks so much and have a good one.